Good morning, everyone. It is so good to uh, have this opportunity to share uh, once again with you. I uh, just want to first say Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Thank you for all that you do. You truly are a blessing to your children and, of course, your family. So I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. And may God richly bless you this day. And may you receive everything that you are deserving of. And so we just want to uh, greet you in, this, in, in that and just want to say thank you for everything that you do. Um, today, I want to share a, a word with you. But before we do, just want to quickly remind you of the importance of uh, continuous prayer for, of course, your families, the family of God, the church, our communities, our, our nation. And uh, we certainly covet your prayers, and let's continue to pray together in agreement. I also wanted to con continuously uh, remind you and, uh, of course, the importance of giving. We thank you ever so much for your weekly, biweekly, and monthly giving, but we certainly are in need of you to continue to do that. Um, I know that God is blessing you, and as he blesses you, uh, we are expecting that uh, he'll continue to bless you, but just continuously be a, a, a cheerful giver, and just continue to stand on that promise, Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So, Want, to, want you to be blessed with that. And so I'm hoping that we will be able to gather soon again. So keep praying for that. Uh, but we're doing well. And with God's help, of course, uh, giving him all the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory. Today, I want to share a word with you uh, that the Lord laid upon my heart. And I really find it relevant and important for us as believers to stay connected with God, of course, but uh, a way that we can stay connected with God, of course, is by staying connected in the Word of God and, of course, through prayer and relationships that we have with other believers. And we certainly can call, text, and email individuals. But let me go ahead and pray before I get started uh, with this Word, and I'm excited to share it with you. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you are in our midst and that you are an awesome God and that you're a good God. And we know that you have always promised to take care of us and that you are a God that when you told us to pray the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then you said, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver it from it in Jesus' name. So Father, we pray that you would help us as we even receive this word today, God. May it open up more revelation and understanding concerning, Lord, the importance of uh, what we need to do. Lord, I pray that this message would be received. Lord, not just someone just saying a few words, but Lord, may we receive it and may we apply it into our lives because we certainly are going to need to become stronger and stronger as these last days are are that we are in and approaching. And so, Father, we ask you for your help, your guidance, and your direction, and we'll be sure to crown everything back to you, giving you all of the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I want to title my message today, The Heart. And so we're going to talk about the heart, which is the gateway to life. And so the gateway to life, of course, is our heart. And of course, we're going to be talking about the Word of God. And I'm going to outline a few things for you, hopefully to help you to understand how important it is to get into the Word of God. It is the thing that keeps us healthy spiritually and strong spiritually. And we need it more and more, certainly in these times in which we're living and so I want to begin by saying it is important for us to receive the Word of God uh, as what? As a seed. So the Word of God, when you have the Word of God and you're reading the Word of God, it is like a bag of seed. But how we plant that seed is extremely important because 
Sometimes we don't plant the seed in the right ground, and that's what we want to talk about, making sure that the seed of the Word of God is important to read, but it's also equally important to make sure that it's planted into the right ground. Now, sowing seed into the wrong kind of ground will not produce a harvest, and we can produce a harvest when we plant the seed of the Word of God into good ground. And a lot of people are not experiencing a harvest in their life because it could be because they're not taking the seed of the Word of God and putting it in the right ground. Now, we have to approach the, the Word of God, the seed of the Word of God, uh, and understand that it's a promise. And every promise and finished work of God has already been put inside of us as believers, and it's reserved for us. So God has placed within us the finished work of Jesus Christ, and it's reserved for us. And if we want to see his promises, and the Bible is full of promises, if we want to see them come to pass in our lives, we have to plant the word of God in our hearts. Now, as long as we take care of the word of God that's been planted in our hearts, and we're open and receptive to receive the seed, I want you to know we do not have any way or anything we'll be able to uproot what has been planted in you. So it's making sure that we nurture that word, take care of that word, and guard that word. Because when we do that and we protect that, then nothing is going to be able to uproot that word from us, and then we are guaranteed to produce and to receive the promise that God has for us. Remember, it's already available for you as a believer. Now, in light of this, our hearts, please understand that, play a vital uh, part in determining whether or not this experience will bring a positive change in our lives or not. And so, or we stay the same. A lot of people hear the word of God a lot. And I'm talking about believers. They gather in churches every week, sometimes twice a week, or they're listening uh, to preaching, but they find very little results from the word that they receive. And the question is, why are they discovering very little results concerning as much word as they're receiving? Well, they're not taking that word and they're not planting it into the soul of their heart and they're not nurturing it, and they're not taking care of it. Now, I understand that we are free moral agents, and that's the liberty and freedom that God gave us as human beings. We have a will, and we have choice. And so as free moral agents, we can choose to plant the seed of the Word of God in our lives or other kind of seed we can plant. So we have a choice whether we want to receive the good seed of the Word of God or some other kind of seed into our hearts. And a lot of times I'm finding out the miserable and happy believers are planting the wrong kind of seed in their heart and they're getting it from some other way, some other where, other place. But the most important thing is it's about a decision that we have to make. And so our decision uh, becomes very vital in deciding the direction of our lives. So remember, we can uh, lead a great life, a wonderful life, a successful life, and as long as we direct our lives in the right way. God is all about success. God is all about wanting us to do well and to be good, uh, but if we're not directing our lives in the right way and in alignment with his ways and his will, then we will find ourselves in a problematic situation in our lives. So I just want to encourage you with this introduction about making sure that the Word of God is planted into the soil of your heart. My first point that I want to bring out to you is this. I only have a couple points, but I have a lot of scriptures that I want to use to support in what I'm saying. So get a paper out, get, a, get your Bible out and a pen, and just jot these scriptures down. Go back and study them out for yourself. So the first point is, when we plant God's Word in our hearts, we must not uproot it. So it's important that we don't allow the Word of God that's planted in our hearts to become uprooted. 
And we're going to talk about that because there's different things that cause the word of God to become uprooted. Some of it is sin that we might commit, uh, disobedience, being rebellious. Some of those are some things that uproot the word of God. The way that we protect the word of God and keep it in the, into the soil of our heart, into the good ground, is by operating in the word of God and letting the word of God work in our lives. Like I always say, the word works when you what? Work the word. And so I want to bring you to a scripture, take you to a text, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 says this, being born again. So if we're born again, this is talking to us, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. And how does that come to be? By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So the word of God will never, ever die. It will, it's a, it, in fact, the word of God is eternal. And the word of God was actually before creation ever came to be. And so it, it, it's going to exist after, this, after the world is gone and everything around us is vanished and gone and destroyed. So everything that we're living for now is going to pass away. But this word is not going to pass away. It will live forever. And so in this spiritual farming system that we're talking about when it comes to the word of God and the seed of the word of God, uh, which is, is, is important, let me just say this, in this spiritual farming system, I want to get it right, in which God's word is the seed. So this is spiritual farming system, which God's word is the seed and the ground is a person's heart. So remember, every time the word of God is released, it's the seed of the word of God, and it begins to operate in a spiritual farming system being planted into a person's heart. So if you have ears to hear and hearts to receive, then the eternal word of God, when released, amen, will end up in your heart. And so, and then when it lands in your heart, it has an opportunity to produce a harvest in your life. And I want to see you successful, and I want to see a harvest happening in every area of your life. And we have the answer and a solution right here in God's holy word. So the day that we got saved, so remember, it goes all the way back to the time and the day that you got saved. The word of God got in our hearts and gave birth to the harvest of being born again. You know, the moment that we prayed that prayer and accepted Jesus Christ, when we said it out loud, is the moment that we uh, were experiencing the harvest of being born again. So the reason why we're saved and born again is because of the word of God that we spoke, confessed, believed, and agreed with caused us to become born again. And that's what it produced, the harvest of being born again. So you already know that it works. And so um, another scripture that I want to bring to you is in Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Acts chapter 20, verse 32, the Bible says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. So the word of his grace, the unmerited favor, which is able to build you up. So the word of his grace is able to build you up. And it goes on to say, And to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So the word of God, the word of grace is able to build us up and to give us an inheritance among all which are sanctified, meaning set apart, meaning those who are born again, we are sanctified, set apart. We receive the promise of the inheritance by receiving the word of God. And I want to keep reiterating that, how important it is to receive the word of God. Don't only hear the word of God but be intentional in receiving the word of God. I know a lot of people hear a lot of the word of God in our lives, and you're hearing the word of God, but it's not really landing, it's not really producing much. So we have to be intentional and just really key in on uh, focusing on what is being said, and then when we hear it, receive it, then understanding begins to come. And I believe that God wants to do something supernatural in your life through even what I'm talking about now. Because words truly are seeds, whether they take on positive or negative. 
A life, now listen to this, a life apart from the word of God makes a subject to another type of harvest not attached to his word. And that's why a lot of Christians are having so much problem in their life. They're not living a victorious life. They're not living a successful life. They're not living a more than a conqueror's life. And it's because they are living a, a, apart from the word of God. They're living something else. They're living a different and a different thing. And so that, and if our lives is not attached to the word of God, then we can't expect to see positive things happen in our life. So remember, may the, may the word of God be attached to our life. And when it's not, then we'll experience negative things. And so we truly have answers for every situation in our lives. It's just we don't take the time to nurture uh, and to groom ourselves and discipline ourselves to get into the Word of God. Uh, we have to actually put forth that effort. You know, we actually have to sit down and meditate and, and, and be disciplined. Uh, God has to be that important to us and His Word has to be that important to us. And you're that important to God because He gave everything to you and made that available. So there are stages, however, important to remember this, there are stages determining the course of our lives. So there will be stages that will determine the course of our lives. The first stage is influence. So the first stage is influence, and we must be aware of who or what is influencing our lives. So what? ask yourself this question, what is influencing your life right now? That is what's determining your life. So words come into our ears, out of our mouths, and then, what does it say? And, and, and images then enter through our eyes. I'll say that again. I'll, I'll read this again. Words come into our ears, like you're hearing me now, and words come out of our mouths, and images enter in our eyes. So we begin to see it. So here's what the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, the Bible says that the evil communication corrupts good manners. We have to be careful what we're listening to because what we're listening to then, come, then it will come out of our mouths and then it will produce images through our eyes. So we have to protect what we're listening to because the Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners. So the influences to which we expose ourselves determine how we think. There are so many negative people in this world, and I don't like to be around negative people. I'm trying to keep myself squared away. So I have to make sure that I'm not around negative people because negative people have an influence in my life if I allow them to. And so we have to be careful what is influencing our lives and who we're exposing ourselves to because it will determine how we think. If all we ever hear and all we ever listen to is how horrible things are in the world, how bad and how broke, busted, and disgusted we are, and how we'll, I don't know if we'll ever climb out of this mess. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever be healed. I don't know if I'll ever get better. That influences your thinking. However, it'll, it'll influence your thinking in the wrong way because negative thinking and stinking thinking will give us stinking results. Sorry for being so direct. But we want to change the script. We want to change the course of the way that we think. And how we think determines how we feel. I'll say that again. How we think determines how we feel. If we do not like the way that we feel, then we have to change the way that we think. So if you don't like the way that you feel, change the way that you think. Change the way that you're thinking. And the great place to begin is the Word of God. Now, we know that. Everybody knows that. Yeah, how important it is the Word of God. But it, but it won't change anything until we begin to actually do it. So our feelings will determine our decisions. Our feelings determine our decisions. Our decisions determine our reality because they control our actions. So everything is a domino effect. How I feel determines my decision. And my decisions determine my reality because they control our actions. And our actions eventually determines our habits. So if we've got some habits that we're not happy with, if we have some habit, habits that are contrary to the word of God, it all begins, by, begins with our thinking, which determines our feeling, 
and then our feelings determine our decisions, and then our, deter and our decisions determine our reality because they control our actions, and then our actions eventually determine our habits. So it all begins right here with our thinking. And so it's important. Our habits, habits also determine our character, which brings us to our destination in life. So our destination, our destination in life comes out of the habits which, uh, which determine our character. What kind of character are you? And so we have to make sure that we, we divorce ourselves from all of the wrong kinds of things and expose ourselves to the right kind of things. Now, as a pastor, you know, I try to pour into people's lives the word of God. I try to do my best to encourage them. But I'm, I, I'm really surprised by how uh, so many people don't respond to that. They don't really want to hear that. Why? Because it requires work. It requires discipline. And they just simply are just too lazy to, to, to pull up their bootstraps and their britches or their pants and just get down to the nitty gritty and begin to work the word of God in their life. I want you to know that we're living in a time that we cannot afford to space this and to procrastinate any longer because what we're seeing now is not compared to what's to come. And I pray to God that we won't be here, but we don't know that. So please listen and take heed to the word of this man of God who's speaking to your life, investing even the time and the energy in sharing messages with you. It's not by happenstance. It's not just by coincidence. It's just, it's just not something that comes out of that. It comes out of intentionally uh, equipping myself to equip you, to prepare you for what is ahead. And we certainly need that more so now than ever before. So please give attention to this. The Bible says, um, or let me just say this. We are free moral agents, and I know that we can choose our own path in life, okay? So we, again, have to guard ourselves with that responsibility that God gave us as free moral agents who, uh, who have a choice and who can determine their own course and their path in life. But be careful that we don't make the wrong choices and, and, make, and take the wrong decisions because there are consequences to every path that we choose to take in life. And I pray to God as I release this word right now to you in Jesus' name, that you will hear this word, you'll receive this word, and you will produce a harvest of success in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Uh, the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. If you've been listening to any of my messages prior to today, the last one I brought this text out in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. The Bible says there is a way that seems right unto man. Now, isn't that weird? There is a way that seems right to us. But then it says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So there's a lot of things that seem right to us. But if we're not careful and we follow those things that seem right to us, it can end up in death. It can end up in destruction and in failure. If we do not look at our destination, we can change. If we, if we don't like our destination... If we don't like the where, where we're going, where life is headed, and where we're taking our life, if you don't like it, you have the power to change it in Jesus' name. Make a determination. Be intentional every day and say, you know what? I am, going to, I am going to follow the course of action that God wants me to take. I'm going to follow his instructions that he gives to me every day. I want to lead a life that will bring me to a, a successful destination. I rebuke and I cancel all other voices that are speaking to me. Everything that is not of you, God, that I'm seeing, I, I pray, God, you put a guard over my eyes and even put a guard over my mouth so I won't declare and decree and speak negative things. I only speak the word of God because the word of God is life-giving and it's a life-giving change that I need in my life. And that's what I choose to operate in, in Jesus' name. So we know that we don't want to follow the, the way that seems right to us. 
Another scripture that I want to bring to your attention is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 23. Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 23. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. See, we give our attention, when we give our attention to any number of things, uh, I'll say this, we may give our attention to any number of things in our life, but God tells us specifically to give our attention to his word. Remember, he says, my son, attend to my word. Give attention, incline your ears. He's covering every part of the person ears and don't let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart because they will produce life i don't know about you but i want to see i want to i want to see life to be i want life to be produced in my life i want to see the, the 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 great things that god wants me to experience in life and it comes through me submitting and attending to the word of god and valuing the word of god and holding it dear to me because God gave it to us so that we can live it out in our lives. Let me just go ahead and move on. Uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says this, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So our ears are one gate that allows seed to get into our hearts and our eyes are another gate. So we must keep the seed in the midst of our ground, which is our heart, and we cannot get a harvest for, from a, for, from a part-time seed, okay? So we're, we can't get a harvest from a part-time seed. We have to keep it in our heart, and we have to guard it and make it full-time. What I mean by that is you cannot just half-heartedly serve God. You cannot have one foot in the door and then one foot on the other side of the door. You, ha you can't have divided hearts. You can't have divided commitment. You either get in all the way or you don't get in at all. And I trust that you make the decision to get in all the way and apply the entire seed of the word of God in your life and not just part time. And what I mean by part time, another meaning that I mean by that is when we just desperately need God, then we stand on all the scriptures and all of the promises. And then when we don't have need for anything, then we don't attend to the word of God. That's what I mean by being a part time person who is a part-time uh, person who is applying the word of God in their lives. So you're just getting a part-time harvest whenever you need it. You have to get in all the way. So it's not enough to passively sit back and make no effort. A lot of people just sitting back and not making no effort. They want different changes, but they're not putting forth an effort in order for those changes. So we have to be intentional and on purpose actively search for and receive the word of God. So dig out. The 66 books are full of promises and we have to actively search and, and receive a word from God and then guard against the enemy stealing it away from us. Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? We have to guard ourselves from the enemy stealing, even what we're hearing now. Now, I have a feeling that a lot of people that have an opportunity to hear the word of God like what, what they're given every week, a couple of times a week, a lot of people are not taking advantage of it. They don't take the commit, they're not committed to taking the time and receiving the word of God. And because of that, they're not going to see the results in the long term that they're looking for. Take advantage of what is given to you, especially if it's the word of God, because it's life changing. The Bible contains the very life essence of God. That's what we have to also keep in mind. It is the only book in the Liberty of Congress that is alive. Did you know that? In the Liberty of Congress, it's the only book that is alive. And so I just want to leave that first point with you. And I got one more, and then I'll be done. And so the first, all of that, what I just said, is talking about when we plant God's word in our heart, we must not, not uproot it. So always guard that word. The second thing is it's important to prevent other seeds from being sown into our hearts. So we have to make sure that we do not allow other seeds to come and, and be sown in our hearts. The Bible says in Acts chapter 20, verse 32, the Message Bible, now I'm turning you over to God, our marvelous God, whose gracious word 
can make you into what he wants you to be and give you everything you could possibly need in this community of holy friends. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Who we can keep company with greatly influences us. So I'll say that again. Who we keep company with greatly influences us. Who are you keeping company with? I like to say it like this, the bird of the same feather flock together. So we have to make sure who is influencing you in your life. This holds true with good or bad. So we have positive things, people, or negative things, good people or bad. So the people with whom we associate can release seeds that will challenge our harvest. It seems funny to me that people that don't really want to change, they just want to have an excuse and have some leverage to continue to be failures in life. They like to hang around people like that because they have, there's no responsibility, there's no accountability, there's no effort that has to be made. But the moment they're confronted with someone that gives them the word of God, shares the word of God, they don't want to hear it. And the reason why is they don't want to change. They want to always have a reason to complain and always have an excuse. But I don't want to be that way, and I trust that you don't either. Now, look what the Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says this, the book, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou shalt, that, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in it. Or therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So it's important that we understand the meditating the word of God. When we meditate on the word of God, and, and don't let it depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate day and night. In other words, he's saying do it continuously. Make a habit of meditating, studying it. Get meaning of what the word of God says, because it will prosper us and it will lead to success. A lot of times we think that making all the money in the world and have the greatest job is what is successful. Not in God's eyes. God's eyes is you studying and meditating on the word of God is pleasing to him. It glorifies him. And it also releases God's blessing in your life. Now, it seems like that's not, doesn't, you're not really doing a whole lot. Yeah, you're doing everything because you're investing in eternal things. And that's what pleases God. He's not impressed with all of the other things that we are accomplishing in our lives that are outside of the word of God. So we can not expect to get a harvest if we simply come to church on a Sunday and sit passively. A lot of times people just come to church just because they feel better. Don't come to church and just sit there passively. Don't gather around and listen to messages and just passively listen to it and say, oh, that was great. Apply that word. We have to go home, we have to, or be in our homes and, not, and, and think about the word of God after we hear the word of God, remember the message actually begins and becomes activated after we are finished listening. That's when the message really begins. It's not when I say, amen, God bless you. So we have to meditate and to meditate means this, to ponder something, roll it over in our minds. To ponder something and roll it over in our minds is what it means to meditate. We know we have, to, we have meditated on something enough, listen to this, when we can close our eyes and see an inner image of us possessing what we have been thinking about. Closing our eyes and we can imagine uh, possessing the thing that we've been thinking about. So the word of God, when we meditate on it and when you know the results and the and the proof that you've effectively meditated on the word of God is when we can close our minds and see an inner image of us possessing what we have been thinking about. So don't meditate on something that's not going to produce any success in your life. That's not going to produce any fruit in your life. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9 through 11 says this, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. And my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which please, 
which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And this is what the word of God says. If we have learned how to think and do things, other people, let me, let me just say this. Let me just say this. If we have learned how to think and to do things from other people instead of from God, a lot of times we learn how to do things and think and receive thinking from other people other than God, then we're operating in the way that is lower than his. I'll say that again. If we have learned how to think and do things from other people instead of God, we are operating in a way that is lower than his ways. Because remember what we read in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9 through 11, that his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts higher than our thoughts. So regardless of the situation, God's word will never return empty or unproductive. He is pleased when we are healed. He is pleased when we're delivered and financially prosperous because that's what his ways are and that's how he thinks, that we're healthy, that we're prosperous, and that we're delivered. That when we raise our hands and lift our voices, that we're doing it genuinely because we are free and that we are liberated from all of the bondages of sin uh, and we're delivered from it, that we're healthy, that we're wealthy and prosperous in every area of our lives. Psalms 107 verse 20 says, God said that he sent his word, healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So you notice what the word did in Psalms 107 verse 20? God said that he sent his word, healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So the word has power. The seed of the word of God, when it's released and received, it has the power to heal, to deliver and keep us from destruction. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says this, a promise, this is another promise, that no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall, thou shalt condemn. And this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I want you to read that again when we're done, when you're done listening to this. And that's Isaiah 54 verse 17. And it's true that no weapon will prevail against us, but many people neglect to read the rest of the scripture, which says we have the authority to condemn words spoken against us. So if there's condemn, condemning words that have been spoken against us, I want you to know that we are able to have the authority or we do have the authority to uh, come against those things. We, first, we must first condemn these words so that the weapons formed against us will not prosper. So we throw it back where it came from in Jesus' name. So don't receive any uh, condemning words. You have the weapons that God gave you to send it back where it came from. Closing, I want you to know words of judgment against us can plant seeds in our hearts, which can form a weapon to come against us. And we don't need to allow this to happen in our lives. So I want to close now, and, uh, and I just want to remind you of these two points to go back through the scriptures, read the scriptures, meditate on them, let them roll over in your mind over and over again. So remember, when we plant God's word in our hearts, we must not uproot it. And then the second one is it's important to prevent other seeds from being sown into our hearts. So I hope this word encouraged you today. I pray to God for your own benefit, your own spiritual development and walk with God and even your family that you will take heed to this message. Apply it. I gave you a lot of scriptures and all of these scriptures, you have an opportunity to read them and go over them every single day. Use them as an opportunity uh, for a Bible study, self Bible study and begin to use it as a self-help for self-improvement, which will result in an improved life. Don't allow all of these negative things around us to influence you, but let the eternal word of God that is planted into the soul of your heart be the factor that will change the course of your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you. As this word has been released today, Father, may it be activated in Jesus' name, and may we see the results and the manifestation 
of our lives begin to change. May the atmosphere around us begin to change. May the way that we think change, which results the way that we feel and, and making the decision so that we can have the right character. I pray that the course of action that we take today is being, uh, making a decisive decision to apply the word of God. And may we hear testimonies concerning us applying this word and Lord, we'll, we know that you're watching over us, that you're covering us with your precious blood always. And now, Father, I pray uh, these things in Jesus' name, and we crown everything back to you, giving you all of the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We call you blessed and highly favored. Remember, life goes better when God is first. In Jesus' name, remember, Jesus is Lord. Call you blessed. God bless you until next time.